Hi everyone, so A-Level PE and we're looking at contemporary issues in sport. So uh, we are going to look at drugs and doping and the focus of this lesson will be on legal versus illegal use. Okay, so um, this does actually fill in a little bit with ergogenic aids and stuff you would have looked at on AS level. Right, start with retrieval practice. Here's your question. Complete this on the Google Classroom or complete it on your notes and take a photo of it for me. Um, there are different types of transfer. So, actually, oh, sorry, I should say to start with, actually, the exam question paper, this is paper two, okay, not paper one, paper two, because this is skill acquisition. There are different types of transfer of skills that can be used in the learning of motor skills. Using a practical example for each, describe what is meant by positive transfer and bilateral transfer. That's four marks, okay? So, that's, um, that's obviously... Two, um, two parts you've got there, positive and bilateral. That's one mark for describing what positive transfer is, and that's one mark then for giving a, pos a, a, a practical example of positive, and that's the same for bilateral. What is it? Give an example. Four marks. Pause this video and complete that question. Go for it. Right, contemporary issues in sport, drugs and doping. So, uh, what I'll do is I'm going to post these um, links up on uh, Google Classroom for you, okay? But there's just some useful um, sort of guides, really, as, as, or some examples of case studies that might be useful to have a watch. Um, so the top one is just a little bit of, of, of CNN where they're explaining. It's only a two-minute YouTube clip. It just explains about the performance enhancing drugs um, and, and sort of why why athletes use them. Um the BBC have recently done a documentary on Lance Armstrong. It's on BBC iPlayer. Um, so there's part, there's two parts to it. Um, I've put the link here to part one. Have a watch of that. It's, it's interesting to see like, the lengths that he went to to cover up. Um, if, you, if, if you have got access to it, there's also a really good movie on Lance Armstrong called The Programme, um, which, um, is in, which basically shows like, the, the, um, how he was um, deviant and... Uh, how he tried to get around it's really really good movie actually worth the watch and also in carcass uh, it's a netflix documentary and it focuses on the russian doping scandal um so if you've got netflix give that a watch it's really interesting um but i'll put those links up on classroom for you if you haven't what well, i'm sure i've said about watching them before but if not watch them um they're useful right so uh we're on to the last um, sort of second year content, really, before we, we get back into to AS revision. Um, deviance. So what, what do we mean by deviance? Well, deviant is this sort of behavior that that sort of that is away from what the spirit and the normal sort of values of the sports are. So it sort of goes away from this aspect of fair play and competition and goes at this win at all cost mentality. So especially in these high level sports, we see it quite a lot in these elite level sports. We see this win at all cost mentality quite um, quite prevalent, quite at the, sort of at the, at the top of it all. So it's away from the actual, you know, fun, enjoyment, competition, fair play aspects of what sport should be and it's more to this win at all costs and that's probably a useful sort of term to keep in the back of your head if you were happen to define deviance at any point in an exam win at all cost is sort of a, a good sort of just go to um well there's there's sort of three areas we're going to look at over these next few lessons we're going to look at drugs and doping which is going to be our first point we're going to look at violence in sport uh, and and um, also media as well, a little bit in there as well. And uh, we're going to look at gambling in sport. Uh, so we'll look at um, only media, a little bit in violence. We're going to look at um, also after that, we'll, we'll look at commercialization and globalization as well. Um, so uh, drugs and doping, this is what we're looking at. So we're looking at substances used by athletes to improve their performance. And so this does link into what we looked on it with um, ergogenic aids. Okay, so you already have quite a good understanding of drugs and doping um, because we've already gone through quite a lot of this. Um, the things that you should be be aware of, um, so there is a, in drugs and doping, there is what we call a banned list. So these are drugs that are made illegal in sport. Uh, and this is um, uh, put together by WADA. And WADA 
are the World Anti-Doping Agency. So they are responsible for the banned lists in every country. Uh, and uh, we do have um, sort of uh, national um, anti-doping agencies. So the UK is the um, UK ADA, which is the United Kingdom Anti-Doping Agency. Um, and they, they basically enforce the banned list that WADA produce. Um, so we do need to, to understand that, that not all drugs on the ban list in sport are illegal drugs in society. So um, some of the drugs um, are you are able to that that are are legal to have in society. Not all of the ban list are illegal drugs. Um, and the reason for this is the fact that most of these banned substances on, on WADA's list are what we call PEDs and PEDs are performance enhancing drugs. So what what are the banned substances in sport then? Well, I've, what I've done is I've put a little tick next to the ones that we cover at AS on, er, on uh, ergogenic aids. And uh, what I have done in brackets as well is try to put some of the hooks in there as well. Well, we've got HGH. OK, so HGH, human growth hormone, ergogenic aids, illegal. Um, you know, and, and we've got the, you know, the pros of this. We've got the, the FGH, haven't we? So it uh, it's, um, uses fats. Uh, and it breaks down fats better. So it's a free fatty acid used more effectively. We've got growth of um, of, of, uh, of of muscle, of bone um, quicker. And we've also got heels quicker. So we've got improved recovery. So those are your advantages. And then the disadvantages were, well, it's the hairy. You get abnormal growth of, of heart and you get hands and feet abnormal growth as well. So um, just just I'm just going through that one to give you. So just to show you, actually, you know, you've got the hooks for these already. You already know actually what they are. Um, it's just worth knowing actually what is classified as as um, as banned substance by WADA. Anabolic steroids are banned. And obviously we've got MAD as the disadvantages for anabolic steroids. We've got EPO, for protein as a banned substance for uh, aerobic athletes. Um, and we've got blood doping also as a as a banned, um, not a banned substance, but a banned um, method. OK, so remember, blood doping isn't a substance, but it's a method. So um, that's just something to be aware of when we're looking at, at banned substances. It's not always um, things people are putting in themselves, but it's actually the methods being used as well. Two that we haven't covered at AS, we've got diuretics and beta blockers, uh, beta blockers. Now, you probably would have heard me talk about these as alternatives on AS because they sort of fit in a little bit, but just ones that you, you don't include. Um, diuretics. Um, diuretics are used for two reasons. One, to, um, to have rapid weight loss. So that might be for a boxer cutting to make sure they're hitting their weight category. But also they're used as a masking agent. So if someone is um, maybe taking HGH or anabolic steroids, they might use a diuretic to try and flush that out of their body. You know, they're trying to, to, to um, get out all the illegal substances so that when they're tested, they're clean. Um, so that, that's a diuretic. Um, beta blockers. Well, beta blockers, um, they, they reduce heart rate. So if they're reducing heart rate, they're keeping your body calm and um, they're keeping blood pressure low. So this might be beneficial for people like snooker players, archery um, performers, you know, people where you need the low blood pressure so that when actually you're performing your action, it's smooth and accurate. So. So, yeah, so those are your banned substances. Um, we have got so legal supplements in sport. And again, we've covered most of these in our um, AS. Uh, content so creatine well you know the hook creatine for that you know so um i won't go through it now but you know the cramps um improve um cp you know we've got retention of water we've got extra um atp um so we've got also increased time intensity we know it's not good for the digestive system but it, you know it, it, and it's also giving you that extra weight so you've got the advantage and disadvantage to creatine there okay caffeine we look at with with um, you know the, the the reaction time concentration you've got the hook caffeine bicarbonate um, well okay you you know you know that what it has effect on lactic acid you've also got the hook bicarbonate for that as well which is ergogenic aid 
Uh, and then uh, carbohydrate re re replenishment, so carb loading. Okay, we've gone through that as well uh, at AS level. The only one we've not gone through illegal supplements are things such as recovery formulas, so things like protein shakes. So actually, you know, taking on excess protein to try and speed up recovery, making you know the the, the recovery more effective. So maybe you have less um, likelihood of of, of uh, experiencing DOMS. So those are the legal supplements in sport. Um, so sort of legal advantages and disadvantages then. So actually, whilst we could talk all day probably about the, you know, the, the illegal advantages and disadvantages, then we do need to be aware of legal advantages and disadvantages. So what are the legal advantages of um, taking the supplements? Well, actually, the legal ones, um, the advantage of taking legal supplements, well, what we get, if you're taking protein, you're getting increased recovery. Therefore, you're getting increased probably muscle mass because you can train harder. If you're taking creatine, you're getting increased PC stores. So you've got more energy. And if you're taking um, water as a as a um, supplement, well, you're making sure that your body is fully hydrated. The legal, so sort of the disadvantage for taking legal supplements, well, it's still taking away this element of fair play because you're taking something additional. Um, to enhance your performance. Um, there is an unknown aspect, actually. We don't know what the long-term adaptations of, of taking creatine is. We don't know the actual overall effect it may have on the liver, the kidneys. So actually, there could be longer-lasting effects on creatine by, from taking creatine. And finally, some um, substances may have illegal substances in there. There was a um, just a personal experience of mine from a few years ago. Um, a friend of mine was taking a protein um, supplement, um, and that his co uh, his uh, rugby coach was telling him to take, and uh, it actually turned out that it ended up on it was on the banned substances list because actually it had traces of anabolic steroid in there. So some may have illegal substances in them and you may not even know that it's got the illegal substance in it because it doesn't say it on the packet but it's when it gets investigated by WADA or UKADA it actually gets found out that it's actually got these in them okay so those are just some things that you could talk about if it asks you about the benefits or or um, the negatives of taking these legal substances what so that's a little bit about like what are the 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 um the legal substances but so what are the reasons for illegal drug use in sport well there's three sort of aspects to this there's physiological social and psychological the physical is just that it's to improve the physical capability of the body okay so if i can use steroids i can get bigger i can be stronger the social responses so this might be uh, you know the, the coach is saying it, or applying pressure you take this you can you're going to be better so um a friend of mine who's into bodybuilding uh, he's got a coach because actually he's starting to do professional bodybuilding and starting to go to shows he's all natural at the moment but his coach has suggested to him about taking illegal substances to improve his look now he won't do it because he's um he's a cracking lad to be fair but it's the pressure though from a coach that could make you know or, or his peers and his people he's competing against that could um that could make him um go to it and do it but also the the, the pressure from politics so let's say so um we've got let's say we have the commonwealth games in 2022 going on in birmingham well, let's say the UK want to use this as a what we call the shop window effect, which is what we spoke about in, in political tools on the AS content. Um, so let's say we want this shop window effect. We want to show how great our country is, how great our athletes are. So therefore, there might be political pressure um, on the athletes to win. So the athlete might turn to illegal drug use to make sure they win. If you watch the Lance Armstrong documentary, your your or the the program on um, the the film called the program, you'll see this sort of this this term of well actually, it might be you don't want to do it, but actually um, you might start believing that everyone else is doing it, and because you believe everyone else is doing it, you might think well if, firstly if they're getting away with it, I can get away with it, but then also well it's if they're doing it, I'm going to do it because I need to be as good as them. 
So there's this belief is, well, everyone else is doing it, so I need to do it. There's also a belief is that you will not get caught. What I spoke about earlier about this win at all costs um, attitude, okay, you need to win at all costs, therefore you need to go away from fair play. Um, and also the state-sponsored program. So that is something like in the Arcarcus with the, the Russian um, um, the Russian ban, Olympic ban, which was because that was state-sponsored program. So they were actually pumping drugs into the athletes at a state level, a government level, um, because they want to show everyone that, that, you know, the Russians are that good. Um, and then finally, we've got these psychological reasons. Well, actually, we've got improved functioning for brain function. So... OK, we normally talk about aggression being this this negative part of um, of, of steroids, but actually aggression could be better in a, in a competition because you're more aggressive. Therefore, you're more forward and you might be more, you know, you might take more risks. So a way of just remembering that, that, you know, the reasons for illegal drug use in sport, remember, pros take drugs. OK, and pros gives you sort of like a base to talk about. So P gives you the pressures you can talk about you know pressure from significance of a pre pre uh, pressure from um politicians and shop window effect rewards well the, the financial gain by winning you know if you you know anthony joshua wins all the time he's he's you know rolling around in nice fancy cars and big houses that gives other people like um baby boy miller who was his opponent well if i want to beat him i need to and I want to get all of his rewards, I need to be bigger, I need to be better. So he might turn them to illegal drug use. Others are using it. So the O is for others. Other people are doing it, so I may as well do it. And S is that success, the increased shop window. The more success, the more reward. And also success, not just for the athlete, but also success for the politicians, for the country, okay? Greater success all around means greater reward for the athlete. Right now, on to the, onto your question. So uh, this is a paper free question. Can you identify one example of an illegal drug used by a sports performer to enhance performance and state one implication of such drug taking on society? Two marks. Um, obviously, one mark for the identification and then one mark for the implication. Right. Well done, and I will um, see you in tomorrow's lesson, which will be the, the next part of drug taking.